Hello everyone, uh, welcome to this new video. So in this today's video, we'll be solving the problem strings count. This is an easy level question and is the problem of the day on Geeks by Geeks today. And this has been asked by Amazon and Google and the topic tags are strings, dynamic programming, data structures and algorithms. Fine. So let us go to the question now. Given a length n, count the number of strings of length n that can be made using a, b, c with at most 1b and 2c allowed. Okay. So there is no constraint on a. The only constraint is, is on b and c. So in the given string that you are going to frame, either you can use 1b at 0b's or at most 1b. And uh, coming to c, you can use 0c's or 1c or 2c's, not more than that. Okay. So this is the you know question and these are some of the examples so you can just go through it uh, you'll get some better clarity like if n equal to 3 19 possibilities are there so making sure that you are not using more than 2 c's and more than 1 b and a's there is no restriction you can use 3 a's 4 a's anything uh, up to the length n okay and expected time complexity is o of 1 and auxiliary space is o of 1 just to mention the topic tags they are mentioned like dynamic programming and recursion stuff this cannot be done in uh, this sort of time complexity it goes up to o of n and o of n but if you can just derive a pattern and uh, you know frame and formula then you can easily solve this in o of 1 and o of 1 and that's what i did okay so you can find many editorials where there's uh, you know um uh, solving in like people solve that using recursions like time complexity go of 2 o of 3 power k because we are dealing with three variables here so, uh, a's b's and c's count and o of n if we memorize the stuff and we can use dynamic programming but this is a particular solution where we'll be seeing the pattern clearly and therefore we need not need extra space and time we can just directly compute it and return it okay so n goes up to 10 power 5 so that's the reason they have taken long long end they have not uh, mentioned the use of mod so rather they took the you know variable uh, the data type to be long long end so that it can hold the values uh, fine so let us go through the approach now because there's nothing more to you know talk about uh, the examples so we'll just figure out the uh, you know approach so if we can uh, before that, before we figure out the approach, I would like to explain a basic concept of permutation. So actually, it's not needed in other problems or something. It's rarely used whenever there's a mathematics involved in the question. But I'm trying to solve, explain that because uh, it will give you some extra clarity. So that's all my pr purpose. Okay. So let us assume you have n objects. Okay. Let us assume you have uh, n objects. So they can be like A, B, C, D, so on. Okay. So let us assume there are n objects with you. And you would like to place them in n different ways okay i mean uh, there are n spaces available to you you need to place those objects fine you need to place those objects so given that all of these are distinct okay mention uh, just mention that all of these are distinct so how many possibilities are there for this first blank there n po there are n possibilities isn't it so there are n choices in total so you can just put them in this first blank and let us assume and how many places how many choices will be there here because you have already consumed one so how many are there n minus one are there and coming to this how many are there n minus two are there so on at the last there will be only one option because there are n objects and n spaces okay n spaces so you'll be consuming everything and at last you'll be only having one so if you just multiply them you get n into n minus one into n minus two into so on till one that is n factorial right so if there are n N distinct objects fine if there are n distinct objects and there are n spaces so how many ways you can try to rearrange them you can try to put them n factorial ways fine i hope you people are getting it so n factorial ways let us take a small example fine uh, i'll just uh, you know uh, keep this aside um, let us take a small example so if i let us assume i have given you a b c d e so how many ways can you arrange or let us assume just a b c how many ways can you arrange this either you can put a to the first and then b c or a c b or b to the first and then a c or b c a or c to the first and a c a b and c b a so how many are there this is basically six different ways and that's actually equal to because there are three 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 distinct alphabets so that's actually three factorial that's equal to six so both of them are matching isn't that so if you can observe the different ways of rearranging them okay rearranging them and putting them is basically n factorial where n is the number of distinct objects but but when you're coming here to this particular question what are the possibilities like what are the things that have been given to you a's are given to you b's are given to you c's are given to you right b can only be be one or zero but a can be n minus two or n minus three or n uh, or n minus one or n isn't it because let us assume there is a string that you need to form of length n and c at most you can use is two 
and b at most you can use this one and so how many are left um, what are the alphabets that are left that you need to still fill n minus 3 and all this n minus 3 must be equal to a isn't it or or you cannot be able to form this string because b can only be used for once c can only be used for twice like maximum so a can only be used for n minus 3 times like rest of the n minus 3 must be filled with a so that is the reason this is n minus 3 or in some cases n minus 2 where uh, you'll be only using a c for one or b for one once and then the rest of the time times uh, you need to use a so that's n minus so that's the reason these are various possibilities okay so when i say n minus three times n minus two times etc that means that many number of times we are using it a is not being used for once we are keeping a case of duplicates right n minus three times a is what we are using that means that many number of duplicates is what we are generating right a has been generated for n minus three times it's not for one time it's generated for a n minus three times so what would be the condition right now so how would you frame the you know uh, strings so if i just erase this so taking the previous example itself a b c as the available character so what are the different strings you were able to form a b c you were able to form a c b you were able to form b c a you were able to form b a c you were able to form c a b you were able to form c b a you were able to form so these are the different six strings available to us six strings we are able to form isn't it so what if i say that you need to frame a string of this time uh, of length seven okay length seven so length seven in the sense how can you do it maximum c that you can use it only for twice maximum b you can use it only for once so max um, the number of uh, the rest of the characters that are four so a need to be used for four you a need to be used for four so if i just put that in alphabet so that is basically a a a a b c c these are the available characters so if i now try Try to you know uh, just erase this part. Uh, if I try to if I try to permit uh, use this uh, you know logic like uh, come up with n factorial, what would be the answer? Seven factorial would be the answer. But in reality, do we have seven factorial distinct uh, rearrangements? No, because if we if uh, let us assume I'm using the first day here to the first. Uh, thing and second day year, third day year, fourth day year, and B C C. Okay, let us assume I'm putting this as. Uh, yellow color okay and same yellow color i'm putting it as the first position now let us assume i'm putting this yellow color at the second position okay so it would be like this and uh, sorry i'll just uh, you know uh, i'll write this in this fashion so second for this first day that you have uh, taken i'm putting it as second and the rest of the thing i'm matching i'm, I'm you know i'm rearranging so b c c so this a comes up here these two remains the same b remains the same c remains the same c remains the same is there any change in the permutation is there any change in the you know rearrangement no it's the same rearrangement whatever a you have taken to be the first and you are trying to put that a in the second will that make any difference it's the same arrangement right so can you count it as distinct arrangement no you cannot right i hope you people are understanding because of the duplicates that we have eight uh, a to be repeating for four times here so you are taking the same a and putting here that means that doesn't make any difference in the arrangement it's the same at the end of the day so you need not count all these things so how do you get the exact number of you know uh, count exact number of uh, uh, distinct permutations so in that case let us derive a small formula for it okay let us derive a formula for it so i'll just erase this stuff let us assume let, let us assume there are n characters okay n characters let us assume there are n characters and in that let us assume there are p uh, you know identical items q identical items r identical items there are n characters in that some of them p in that p of them are uh, identical q of them are second identical like c let like you can consider like these are p number of identicals and then uh, b b these are q number of identicals this is c c c this is r number of identicals and then the, all of them are distinct okay like this you can just assume it like that okay so if there is something like this okay generally what is the formula that we have derived like number of permutations number of permutations is n factorial and let us assume this p that i have told like a a a for p times let us assume i have replaced all of these with some distinct characters a at the date of uh, apostrophe something like that i have replaced okay making sure all of them are distinct so in that case i am actually and also let us assume the exact number of permutations so before in this case where n is the number of uh, total characters and p are identical q are identical r is identical in that case let let us assume uh, the exact number of permutations, the exact number of distinct permutations are x. So n factorial will be x into p factorial. Why? Because now I'm changing this p, okay? And now I'm changing this p into some distinct characters. Now these are no more identical. So that time I'll be I'll be multiplying with p factorial, isn't it? Now because all of them are distinct, there's an extra there's an extra involvement of p distinct characters. So all of them will be rearranging themselves in p p, uh, p factorial, p factorial different ways. So x into p factorial. Similarly, if I'm replacing all the q with some q distinct characters, then it be q factorial and similarly if i replace all the r with some distinct r fact r uh, no distinct items then would be r factorial so in this case r would be sorry x would be equal to x would be equal to n factorial divided by p factorial into q factorial into r factorial okay so this is the distinct number of permutations distinct number of 
permutations okay or arrangements distinct number of arrangements so if in case you are not able to understand this formula it's completely fine you can remember like this if there are total number of characters to be n and in that p are repeating q are repeating r are repeating like p is the length uh, you know number of characters that are repeating of one set and q is number of uh, characters that are repeating of another set q r is another set and repeating for r times so you can just multiply you can just divide n factorial by p factorial into q factorial into r factorial okay so you can when remember in that way it's not a very big deal uh, i hope so right so if in case you are not able to understand the proof it's completely fine just remember this formula okay we'll be applying the same formula here fine so how are we going to apply so this is the thing i've actually uh, you know written all of this uh, beforehand so let us assume in the uh, uh, like this is the n size uh, you know string that we need to form and if it's let us assume all are all the n you know spaces we are going to fill with this so what is the number of ways that we're going to get only one right so if there are five blanks and if i'm going to put a a a a a this is the only way is there any other way if i try to put this a the here in the first position and the first in the last will that make any difference no all the all of them are would be a's itself so it will be only one you know different uh, possibility let us assume what is the second possibility so this is done what is the second possibility is n minus 1 a's and 1 b so what i means what am i saying so there are n, n spaces and in that i'm putting a a a a a okay i'm putting a a a a a and the other one to be b only one blank to be b so this b can be here this a can be here this another another arrangement so this b can be here this a can be an, another arrangement so there are several arrangement possible how many arrangements are possible n factor by n minus 1 factor why i was i already told you how many duplicate characters are there n minus 1 duplicate characters are there so just apply that formula total characters n factor divided by duplicate characters how many are there a a's are there they are duplicate for n minus 1 times so n minus 1 factorial so that would be the answer right b is not duplicate b is only appearing for once so it's not it's not duplicated so n factorial by n minus 1 factorial i hope you people understood okay so similarly similarly that, let us assume instead of b we have c okay so third cases third cases instead of b so second is done instead of b we have c so the same thing repeats again c is not duplicate so you'll not be putting that in the denominator but n minus 1 a's are repeating and they're all duplicates so we divide that by n minus 1 factorial so this is also done and let us assume come to the fourth case where n minus 2 a's are there and 1 b and 1 c is there okay so in your string n character string let us assume there is one b and one c and all of them are a's so how many a's are there n minus 2 are there because one is covered one is covered one is b is there one c is there so how many are covered two are covered so n minus 2 so all of them are duplicate n minus 2 a's are duplicate so we divide n factorial by n minus 2 factorial so if we do that we get n into n minus 1 right so here n n and this is one fine so fourth case is also done what's fifth case let us assume instead of one b and one c the both of them are c's okay so here like this c and c so in this case c's are duplicate how many duplicates are there two so that's the reason we are multiplied and uh, in the denominator we have n minus 2 factorial this denotes a's and 2 factorial this denotes c's right so n factorial by n minus 2 factorial into 2 factorial so that is basically n into n minus 1 into n minus 2 factorial divided by n minus 2 factorial into 2 factorial so the n minus 2 factorial n minus 2 factorial gets cancelled so that's finally n into n minus 1 by 2 right i hope you people are understanding this particular points very very easy to be honest so uh, fifth point is also done what's the last point where n minus 3 a's are there and 1 b's and 1 2 c's so this is the extreme condition where you are using all the 2 c's and uh, like c and c and also you are using 1 b and rest of the uh, characters how many rest are there 1 b you have used 1 c 1 c total 3 characters you have been used so n minus 3 are there so n minus 3 will be a's okay so n minus 3 a's in the sense all these are duplicates so n minus 3 factorial and 2 c's are there 2 c's are duplicates so 2 factorial right so this is for a and this is for c so this is for c 2 is for c so if you just uh, write that n into n minus 1 into n minus 2 into n minus 3 factorial right n factorial so divided by n minus 3 factorial into 2 factorial so you can just cancel this you'll be getting with n into n minus 1 into n minus 2 by 2 right so you have got all these you know different possibilities these are the six different cases so you can just add them so 1 plus n plus n that is 1 plus 2n and n into n minus 1 plus n into n minus 1 by 2 plus n into n minus 1 by uh, n into this one so you can just see that addition here i've taken n into n minus 1 common you get 1 plus 1 by 2 plus n minus 2 by 2 so if you just solve it you'll be getting like n into so I missed it. N into n minus one into n plus one by two, right? So this whole dilutes to n plus one by two. So n minus one into n plus one, it's a square minus b square, a minus b into a plus b. So that's what I've written. N square minus one, and then this n, this so n into n square minus one by two, right? So totally, how many are there? This one plus two n. This is uh, n into n square minus one by two. So that's what I'm adding. One plus two n into plus two n square n into n square minus one by two. This is the total number of you know uh, dif distinct uh, arrangements. So this is what will be written as finally. I hope you people understood. So you can just exam this proof. It's not really necessary. It's just for better clarity, I've explained. So so not in many youtube video videos or editorials you find this formula so it's better if you can remember this and you can apply for other concepts as well you'll be finding all these things in competitive programming for sure so it helps helps you there a lot fine so i hope you people understood how did we derive this formula and what are the permutation how do you come up with a formula and pattern for a permutation and this is the cases like we can just uh, you know see different cases possible because here there's a limited constraint c is only appearing for at most two and b is only appearing for at most one but a very limited constraint so we can consider doing this instead of recursion and dynamic programming fine and that's what i've actually coded up 
so i just i've taken long long in answer to be this whole thing one plus two and plus and into n square minus one by two and finally written right so i hope you people understood uh let me know if there are any doubts in the comment section and for your reference course in c plus plus java python are there in the description please go through them fine so thank you guys for watching this video i hope it, uh, you find it you found it helpful and uh, yeah that's it so thank you for watching stay tuned